So we have gathered together on this Sunday, the first time we've been together for this new year. And uh, God wants to put new in the new year. He wants to emphasize the new in this year. Because if you take the new out of the year, all you have is leftovers. And Jesus doesn't like leftovers. He doesn't operate in leftovers. Have you ever been invited or invited someone to your house for dinner and served them leftovers? How do you think that would go over? Not good at all. Jesus doesn't invite us to his house and then serve leftovers. What used to be. What you used to hear. What you used to see. Jesus is about serving you something that is brand new. Fresh. Not used. One, uh, I can't remember if it was a Christmas or a birthday. Must have been a birthday, I, I'm not sure. But this was a gift that we gave to our oldest son, Jason. And the gift, we were, we were poor. We didn't have any money. We went out and bought a used bike and I spray painted it to cover up, you know, what was lacking, the rust and all the stuff, and gave it to our son. He wept. He just cried. He knew it wasn't new. I thought we were gonna trick him just for a minute into thinking that what we got him was new but it was used, it was old. He hated it. He didn't appreciate it at all. Taught me a lesson. Never bought him a used bike again. Jesus is not about leftovers. Again, when he invites us into his house, into his presence, He's about newness, renewing. He's about something you and I haven't seen before, experienced before, heard before, touched before in that same way. You know, the God who delivered the children of Israel, we've heard the story of how he fed them in the, in the desert with manna with this pasty substance that came from the sky. But as, as much as that came from God himself, you couldn't just hold on to it for the next day. It would rot in your pocket. you start smelling. People would be like, something don't smell right. You don't think somebody tried to hide some manna, do you? Because it stinks. Pretty soon they do a manna check. Who's hiding the manna? Why are you holding on to what you had yesterday? God will provide tomorrow. You got to trust him. You've got to trust him. So the father wants to put the new into the new year. The old belongs to the past. So let's look at Lamentations chapter 3, 19 through 23. This is a very familiar passage. Lamentations 3, 19 through 23. It says, the thought of my suffering and homelessness is bitter beyond words. 
I will never forget this awful time and I grieve over my loss. Yet I still dare to hope when I remember this. The faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. Morning by morning by morning, day after day after day, you wake up. And most days we rarely think of how much mercy is waiting for us when we open our eyes. So God doesn't wait until we get into trouble. He doesn't wait until we have a problem. He doesn't wait until we feel sad, low, grief, heartache, pain. It says in the morning, when you wake up, you haven't done anything yet. You've hardly thought or thought mercy is waiting for you. It's like it came to your house, knocked on the door, somebody opened it, it came to your bedroom, it's standing over you, and it's waiting for you just to move. Mercy is waiting for you every day of your life. And it's fresh. It's not old mercy. It's not the mercy you needed yesterday. It's the mercy you need for today. And you don't even know what today holds yet. That's what's new. It's God's mercy. Every time. You know, there's a lot of things in life that distort our thinking and our view. Mirrors are one of them. Mirrors lie sometimes. You know, I don't know what you were doing during the uh, pandemic, but it, it, it came... It became known to me that what one of the things I was doing is I was eating a lot. I was just eating. I was snacking more than, than normal. But guess what? I would look in the mirror every day, and I would say, "That's pretty. You look pretty good. You're not. You're not looking bad. You're holding your own, buddy. You look younger than what you really are." I really spun that lie in my head throughout the pandemic until it came about that Mary and I got invited to a wedding. I go to put my wedding suit on. It don't fit. I mean, it's not fitting. I am pulling with all my might, hoping this thing would snap together, wouldn't snap. I go and call my wife. I said, Mary, help me with these pants. Maybe you can put them on for me. No way, no how. Wouldn't work. I had to go and shop and buy another pair of pants just to go to this. It was, it was a nice wedding. I was going to say something else, but it was a, the wedding was not the problem. I was the problem. Weight gain during the pandemic, thinking I was okay, looking in my mirror. See, mirrors can lie, or maybe it's our perception in the mirror that's, that ends up being a lie. Some of us think we're better than what we are. I thought I was, looking in the mirror. Some of us are better than what we are, than what we think. Because God says this, the perfect mirror is his word. And we've got to hold his word up in front of our face over and over and over again to see who we really are, to see who God says we really are, to see what we're really all about. The only way is to hold up his word over and over and over again, like the mirror, and just say, show me, God, show me you, show me me, show me reality. 
So he's left his word as a mirror for us. Luke chapter 5, verse 38. New wine must be stored in new wine skins. So we know what new wine is. It's the Holy Spirit. It's God himself. It's God himself in the Holy Spirit who is poured out. It's like an eternal pouring out. It's like, it's like a fountain that never ends. That's one of the pictures of the Holy Spirit, a fountain that never ends. It's a continual being poured out on his people, this Holy Spirit. But one of the things we don't think about it as much is that you are the wineskins. The Holy Spirit has to be poured out into someone. The Holy Spirit is not about being poured out into this mic. He's not about being poured out into this ceiling, about being poured out into this stage, about being poured out into things. He's about being poured out into people. You're the new wineskin. You're the people that God was looking for. You're the ones that the Holy Spirit is being poured out into continually, over and over. It's, a, it's just this steady stream coming down from the Father of lights, coming down from heaven, filling your hearts, filling your souls. It's God himself giving you all that he has, the best that he has. Ezekiel 36, verse 36. And I will give you a new heart. I will put a new spirit in you. I will take out your stony, stubborn heart and give you a tender, responsive heart. God is about breaking open hearts, breaking open our hearts so that there's a crack big enough for his spirit to work itself into. So God's not about embarrassing us for the sake of just showing that we're messed up. He's about cracking open our hearts just enough to put his spirit inside because he wants to give us a new spirit, a new heart. That's what he's about. New people are new inside and out, inside and out. I've shared this story a bunch of times, but it's, it's just, it's when Jesus came into my life. That night, I knelt down and I prayed. I, the Holy Spirit had just been working on me for months, saying, you know what you need to do. You need to give your life to Jesus Christ. And I was like, Oh, no. If I do that, I got to give up partying, drugs, all this stuff that I thought was really worth something. And I just kept wrestling with that. But the night I got on my knees and prayed, I said, Father, if you're really God, would you come inside of me and take over? The next morning I wake up, I see my dad. He's the first person I see in the morning. And inside of me, my brain is like, look at your father. Don't you love your dad? I'm like, no, I don't. What happened to me? What is, wh why am I thinking like this? And I said, I bet Jesus came inside. That was my response. I said, I bet Jesus came inside of me because he did with new thoughts, with a new spirit, with a new heart. That's what happened to many of you in this room. Many of you in this room. Jesus came inside. God's people are new inside and out. 
So that's where Jesus goes. He goes to the inside and he just starts developing this new creature, this new person, this new someone. And he has not stopped since. So what's new this year? I am praying for a spirit of knowledge and revelation in you knowing Jesus Christ. I'm praying you would see him where you haven't seen him before, in ways you haven't seen him before, and you'll see yourself carried in his hands like never before. The word says that God delights himself in his people. Like he finds pleasure in us. And while we were worshiping, it, it was just, I was overwhelmed. By knowing that God thinks about me that I'm always on his heart. I'm always in his brain. He doesn't have a, you know what I'm saying. Don't picture a, a pinkish thing. I'm overwhelmed. So let's look at, I'm just gonna look at two more verses. You know what? Paul, this is one that I don't think I gave you. It's Isaiah 28, 5 and 6. Then at last, the Lord of heaven's armies will himself be Israel's glorious crown. He will be the pride and joy of the remnant of his people. He will give a longing for justice to their judges. He will give great courage to their warriors who stand at the gates. So go back to verse five again. Then at last, the Lord of heaven's armies, this is God himself, will be Israel's glorious crown. He will be the, the authority and the royalty and the power and all that we need on us, he will be the crown on his own people. So now, look at Isaiah 62. Because what we've just looked at, Isaiah 28 tells us that God will be like a crown sitting on, over all of our heads. And a crown represents royalty, authority, power, might. So compare it with this verse, Isaiah 62, two through four. The nations will see your righteousness. World leaders will be blinded by your glory. And you will be given a new name by the Lord's own mouth. The Lord will hold you in his hand for all to see. A splendid crown in the hand of God. Never again will you be called the forsaken city or the desolate land. Your new name will be the city of God's delight and the bride of God. For the Lord delights in you and will claim you as his bride. So what I wanted you to see is that in the first verse, God says he will be a crown over the heads of all of his people, a symbol of authority, of royalty, of power, of might, of wisdom. And as he rules and reigns as king over everyone, especially over his house, over his people, he's going to be carrying us in his hand as a crown as a crown of beauty, as a symbol of authority and power. So I want you to just see that somehow, that picture, the Lord. 
a, his crown. His crown is you. His symbol of authority, because get, get this, in, in, in the future, when we go to be with God, the whole universe, everything else that God has created is going to look at you in wonder that you, a man, a woman, are being treated so highly by God himself who made everything. Do you understand that? It would be like the president of our United States moving a homeless person into their, into their dwelling place. We would be like, no, Mr. President, Mrs. President, you can't do that. You, you shouldn't do that. You're opening up yourself for, you know, stuff. Stuff will happen. You know, we'll build a house for the homeless guy. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll get a hotel room for him. Don't let the homeless guy move in with you. That's how some angels would react to us. Saying, where'd you get him from? Where'd you find her? She was so, she is so messed up. There's, not, there's hardly hope for her. You know, we'll build a house for her somewhere else. Don't bring her into heaven. God, the almighty father, the ruler of heaven and earth, wears you like a crown on his head as a symbol of his authority, of his rulership, of his power and his might. And he wants heaven and earth, angels and demons, to see who he loves, what he loves, who he is for, who he is saving. He wants it plain. You're his crown. And while he's ruling over heaven and earth, he's carrying you like a headband, like a crown in his hand. Just saying, look what I got. Look what I found. You know where this person has been. You know what they've been up to. But I am carrying them like a crown of royal authority and power and might and strength. You don't know how good you have it. We don't know how good we have it. We didn't know what we were getting into when we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We had no idea. No idea. And it just keeps growing. It just keeps growing. It's new every morning. His mercies are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, God. Great is your faithfulness. Oh. So I wish all things were new. I wish all things were new. You are the people. You are the new wineskin. The Holy Spirit is being poured out, will be poured out, always. But what God is looking for is new wineskin, new people. This is, like, this is like a new church, you know that? This is like a new church. And it's because of all of you who are here. Some of you were here before. Some of you are just showing up. But we're all together making up this brand new body of believers. And all God is looking for is new wineskins, people who would just be willing to be cracked open a little bit 
so his Holy Spirit can find a place to be poured into. And it'll just keep growing and growing and growing. 